Hello, everyone, and welcome to Dial the Gate. My name is David Reed. Thanks so much for tuning in. Rainbow Sun Franks, Aiden Ford, Stargate Atlantis, is going to be joining us for this episode. But before we really get rolling here, if you enjoy Stargate and you want to see more content like this on YouTube, it makes a difference if you uh, click that like button. Uh, it will help the show continue to grow its audience. And please also consider sharing this video with a Stargate friend. And if you want to get notified about future episodes, click the subscribe icon. Giving the bell icon a click will notify you the moment a new video drops and you'll get my notifications of any last minute guest changes and clips from this live stream will be released over the course of uh, the next uh, few weeks on the dial the gate and GateWorld.net YouTube channels as this is a live episode we have rainbow uh, calling in from his phone. He is out and about right now, so we're going to have him here. And uh, while I am asking him questions and showing a couple of other things as well, um, go ahead and submit your questions in the YouTube feed at youtube.com slash dial the gate, and I'll turn around and ask uh, some of those questions to him. So thank you so much uh, for being here to be a part of that. Without further ado, Mr. Rainbow Sun Franks, Aiden Ford of Stargate Atlantis. Hello, my am friend. I here? Am I on? Am you I on? are. Hi, 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 everybody. How are you? Very uh, good. Are you I'm, at Pride? I am. It's it's Pride in Toronto. It's it's Pride Month, but it's Pride Weekend. You know, we have one of the biggest, I think maybe second or third biggest in the world wow. here in Toronto. And so they've shut down the street. We're, we're at the tail end of it. But as you can see behind me, it's uh, just miles of uh, queer happiness. And it's one of the most beautiful celebrations that we have in this city and it's just so much love all around us. We're having so much fun. It's, just, yeah. it's a great time. The one yeah, in Nashville it's, it's is what, going on this weekend as well, but it's definitely not anywhere as big as that. The whole city just feels wonderful for all the, right. for the last few days. It's incredible. We're going to gear up and, and do the, the, uh, the parade tomorrow. Okay. With my lady. Hi. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's great. So I th it's nice. We're, you should be able to hear me now. We're we're at the top of the street now. So. <laughs> yes. So how are things going timing. for you? I've missed you. I've missed you too, brother. Um, how are things going? Things are going unbelievably well. I'm the happiest I've been in years. Um, I'm I'm excited to wake up every morning, and uh, and everything's great. Work is starting to to go really well. I got a bunch of cool stuff on the go and uh i got some stuff i can talk about some i can't and uh but i'm uh i'm very happy and that's are, all that really matters to me right and now that's and that's the most important thing you know that giving that you have purpose and it looks like you have someone to wake up next to you know this I is do. this is solid stuff it is it is for me it's it's been a while what's on the horizon purpose. that you can share uh well i got a, a i got a uh, cartoon a animated series coming out on Netflix and um, and I have and I'm starting a new Netflix show that I I can only talk about okay. as much as I just said uh, okay. but I start next week um, and other than that I'm uh, starting a new record I'm gonna start uh, working on some new music mm. and uh, yeah, and I'm enjoying the summertime. It's we wait so long in the fucking barren cold in Toronto yeah. for some sunshine, and when it comes, it's like, oh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so I bought a I bought a bicycle. I'm riding my bike everywhere. I just lost twelve pounds. I'm getting back in shape. Everything is wonderful, man. Good Life you. is good. Yeah, man. <laughs> Life is good. Um, I have recently had a chance uh to look at uh some recent work uh through a uh a, a show that you did on hulu called high fidelity high fidelity yeah with zoe kravitz and, yes. and a, bu a bunch of incredible uh actors on that. we had such a beautiful cast and the guests that were on it were just crazy I have I've watched one specific episode. You you had submitted yeah. it, and I want to go back and watch the whole thing. The cast is a talented group of people, and Zoe's a great lead. Yeah, she killed it, and she executive produced, and she, uh, to be honest, uh, what people don't know is she wrote most. Like she took uh, the final pass on most of those scripts and made them really? as good as they were. Yeah, some of those scripts were not as close to as good as they were in the end when she polished them. 
She's an incredible writer. She's an incredible talent. She's just started directing her first feature uh, with Channing Tatum called Pussy Island. She just started this week. So wow. Uh, so her feet are never going to touch the ground she, again. But, she's, oh no, she's and, she, gonna... and she finished being Catwoman. Yeah, she's she's off to the races at this point. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I want. I'm, to... I'm very proud of my little sister. I want to share a uh, we've uh, a clip from High Fidelity. Um, I'd love did that. you did you see the one the the scene that I picked? Yeah, yeah, you picked the okay. one when I come out of the washroom doing cocaine. Yes, and, so uh... it's in the middle. It's in the middle. It's not my favorite scene. My favorite scene is at the end of the episode. But I wanted to With share this wife, one, yeah. right? Uh, and yeah. you getting into the cab saying I was wrong. Right. But I wanted to share this one. Um, because oh, this is a good, this is good act. This is my drunken high acting. It's pretty good. <laughs> well, it's, it's them. Pretty good. It's, it's a brother and sister at being at a brother, some and of sister. Their, but also they're at their lowest. He's yeah. having to deal with a family that he's not necessarily prepared for. And she's yeah. having to deal with her ex whom she still loves with another person. And they're neither both... of us, neither of us want to grow up yet. Right. Neither of us are willing to grow up at this moment. And it's also both of us name calling the other. Exactly. We're, we're we're not we're not taking a we're we're not taking account for for our mishaps. Exactly. Basically. I want to. I'm going to play yeah. this clip, and I'll be right back with you. Please. Okay. Hey, can I talk? Right. What? No. Yeah. No one. We're just a sec. Just one second. It's friends. It's friends. Yeah. First of all. What? Cocaine all over your nose. Second of all. Oh, you think you've had enough? I think I've had not enough. Thank yeah. you very much. Him? No, what's, what's your problem, dude? You're f***ed up and you're making everyone uncomfortable. Maybe you're uncomfortable, as usual, but I'm pretty sure that everybody are having a good time. Thank you very much, Mrs. Grumpy Pants. I'm not grumpy. I'm just trying to handle the situation like an adult, okay? Oh, you're an adult? Because you're just like a little boy. <laughs> Look, just go home to your pregnant wife. Why don't you go home to your pregnant wife? Oh, that's right. You don't have a pregnant wife. Why? Because every relationship that you touch turns to shit. Because you're like, what happened with me and Kat? And what went wrong with me and Justin? Oh, what happened with me and Mac? Who's perfect for me? I'm Rob, and my whole life is mm, pain and mm, problems. So just quick math. Maybe you're the problem. You really suck right now. You know that? Yes, I do know that. Fidelity, which is available now on uh, Hulu. That was one season, it's, yes? It's on, it's, on, it's on Disney Plus, too. Oh, is it now? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And what, what oh, did you going. take okay. away from this cast and this experience of doing wow. this one season before it got canceled? Um, well, I mean, you know, um, Zoe and I are family in real life. You know, my sister's her godmother. I've known her since she was born. And yeah. we've grown up together. And uh, so to get to work with my little sis is magic and someone of her caliber and all of the actors that were in it are, you know, Emmy award nominated, Emmy award winning. Some of them are yeah. just, they're monsters, you know, and they're all from some of my favorite uh, pieces of work. And so uh, to get to work with them, I learned a lot. Uh, it brought up my confidence to know that I could work at that level um, in something that was, uh, out of genre for me, um, that little bit of comedy was like, okay, cool. Like, you know, I had done Shit's Creek and I had done a few things, but this was uh, this was just really fun to to dig into and have a character that was close to me uh, that I was allowed to make close to me because it was a brother sister thing, and um, it was just beautiful. And working in New York, I got to live in Brooklyn for a year. You know, like it's fucking great, man. It was yeah. so great. I just love working. So I, I just, anytime I get to experience something new, uh, it, it's beautiful for me. I just soak it all in. And uh, this was no different. I, as, as a huge fan of Lost, I loved yeah. the Lost reference early in this episode. A vintage Hurley. It's like, what, what is that? Yes. That's, that's, yes. that's Jorge. You, you caught that. You, Absolutely so that, I did. So that was, um, so, so he improv that. Oh, that's that terrific! That, it's the numbers on the back. The numbers. When we pulled the when we pulled the album up, it just happened to be the Hurley record, and so he he recognized it, 
and uh, and that's what he said. And so it it, it stayed in the in the in the edit, which Absolutely is hilarious. Absolutely terrific. We did a bunch of improv that that stayed in that was really good. They were good about that, about letting us riff. Any chance of um, the group coming back together for a for a send off? You know, has there been any 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 chatter? Do you think that um, um, we we were all very heartbroken about getting canceled for yeah. no reason at the end of at the end of the at the end of the first season? We had great ratings. Um, the critics were saying that it was one of the the top three best new shows. You know, we had everything going for us. Plus, we had. Uh, you know, there's a queer story, uh, like queer stories. She was uh, bi. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> the gay storyline. There's uh, there's my storyline. There's there's a black female lead. There's like everything that the industry is pushing for in this show. And for some reason, we got canceled. And I have no idea why. And we didn't really find out why. Um, but we were all very heartbroken. And so, you know, at the end, when we got canceled, Zoe was kind of like, you guys can go fuck yourselves. And uh, so I don't know. She said, "You know what? I'll write something for us later." So I think I think maybe we'll come back in a completely different show at some point because um, I know we all loved each other and uh, we all got along really well. So I'm sure there'll be something. It'll be something else. But uh, well, but she's going to go point, off and do her thing, and you know exactly. what? She's, she, she's, she's like I circle said, she's back around, keep directing and writing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So something something will happen. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Yeah. So I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited for this. Um, this next uh, Netflix project is it is it uh, expanding your range in an, in a new direction? Is this something that you know is, is it offering you anything new to sink your teeth into? The, the animated thing is called uh, Daniel Spellbound, okay, and uh, it's very cool. It's like a, about a kid who lives in a world of magic, like real magic, and uh, he is. His, it's I don't know how to say it. he without giving away too much. Yeah. Um, I play sort of the the uncle who's a bad guy, but he's a good guy, but he's a bad guy. He doesn't know he's a bad guy. I'm I'm the villain. Okay. And it based, and I'm kind of a magic, um, a hunter of magic items, like almost a bounty hunter for magic items. So I I'm searching for all these things so that I can get rewards. It's a very weird story. Uh, it's very cool. The animation looks great. I just the animation's bit beautiful. Of- yeah, are you looking at it? Okay, yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah. I'm looking at yeah. Chantel Riley's in it. Devin Christian Mack is in it. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's going to be very cool. Wow. So I play a character named Burden, who's the uh, who's the bad guy. He's uh, he's a rough mother. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. The stuff yeah. that they are able to push out now on pretty much a TV budget, um, the the fidelity, pardon the pun, of of some of this yeah. content, it's just beautiful. You know. Oh yeah. Oh, I would yeah. love to we see. Love, we love technology. <laughs> oh yeah, very much so. And the things that we can do with it, the 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 fraction of a time that it takes to put some of this stuff out at the level oh. at which it comes out, I would love to see a Stargate project in oh, yeah. CG. You know. Oh yeah. There's no reason for there not to be it. Absolutely. Got some fan questions for you. Oh, I'd love that. Here. Uh, Tracy, more of a comment. Tracy's one of our mods. I just want to say how inspiring and uplifting your Instagram posts are, and your work is so much appreciated. Oh, thank you. That's wonderful. Yeah, I take a lot of pride in my Instagram uh, <laughs> stories uh, to, to do just that, to brighten people's day and to also uh, uh, be on the right side of politics and, and try to have a, have a, a strong opinion on what's morally right in the world and not what's right or left. People uh, are so in the weeds on a lot of this stuff. And it's so important to pull your head up every once in a while, as often as you can and say, Hey, we're all people, you know, be humane. Think about how we can balance this world and, uh, and, and never be putting someone down or out or, fucking with someone's bodies you know it's a it's a messy messy world right now and uh it's gross so uh i try to say what i say with whatever minutia minutia of influence i have in this world and and try to to say the right thing that i know will age well i I know that everything i say is going to age well i'm never on something that i don't think the world is going to evolve into so Mm. i think it's important to, to to think about everyone's rights and everyone's hearts and brains and everything else that we got going it's a it's messed up but yeah my instagram is fucking great i don't want to take this down uh, <laughs> it's all 
also f- full of funny animals and kids getting hurt and oh, things geez. that are funny for all of us. <laughs> oh so follow me at Rainbow Sun on Instagram. Absolutely. Yeah. Jer- Jeremy Heiner. Everybody um, gets made fun of. <laughs> sooner or later. Absolutely. Yeah. You, know? you can't yeah. have a thick skin if you're going to be online. No, God, no. Jeremy Heiner. Rainbow, if you could tell yourself something that you know now on day one when you were shooting SGA, what would you tell a younger you? What have you learned? Uh, save your money. <laughs> Good words for anybody. Save your money. Um, uh, these people aren't your friends. Um, a lot of these old white guys are liars. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, don't don't believe the hype, man. <laughs> all all this could end. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, nothing is guaranteed. Yeah. Yeah. Just because you're having a good time doesn't mean it's uh it's gonna be for a long time. No, I I, I wouldn't. Uh, yeah, I would just say uh, what um, yeah, just keep your head down and do the work. I think I I was really excited and uh, I I believe that I believe that it was forever. I was young. I was mm-hmm. 23 years old. I didn't know what the fuck was going on. Even though I'd been in the biz a long time, that was my first like still things big, to learn. Big series, yeah. you know? Yeah, I had so much to learn. It was a uh, it was a, but also, I don't know if I'd tell myself anything. I needed to learn all these lessons. I don't, I don't no regrets, man. Yeah. No regrets. <laughs> you walked away with some good friends too. So. Oh man. So like when I said, these guys aren't your friends, I didn't mean the cast. I mean, the, the back office people, <laughs> but like, yeah, man, I have some of my lifelong friends. Our, our little weird family is beautiful. <laughs> I, you know, I talk to Polly Walnuts all the time. I love, <laughs> I love that guy. I, I, oh yeah. <laughs> I talk, I talk to Joe all the time. You know, Joe was there when my dad died and really helped oh, me. Uh, that's right. The, like the minute that it happened, and uh, I'm forever indebted to him for that. Uh, Rachel's my big sis forever. You know, she even says Julie, hello. Who, we had her on last week. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And even who? I'm so sorry. Um, oh, I said even David Hewlett, who's yeah. an absolute mess. I love that guy. You know, we're all just yeah. It's great. I love those guys. I had such a great time with them. And the fact that we've been able to travel the world together. Um, Stargate has given me what no other show that I've ever done has. And that's um, like a really big family. Like the, the, you, you're a part of that. You know, look how long we've been friends. I know. Like been, it's been a minute. It's been a long time, man. Yeah. yeah. Like you've watched me grow from a boy to a man. You, you know? sure have. Um, Melissa Smith, Rainbow, if you could have chosen a love interest for Ford, who do you think that that would have been? What kind of direction would that have gone? Oh, man, I would have loved for him to fall in love with a, a rape queen. And it oh, jeez. Really weird. And awesome. <laughs> I'd watch that porn. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, I'd make that porn. If you guys, oh, no. Try to go fund me. Try to go fund me. We'll only it. fans with with uh, yeah. with Ford only and Fords. Wraith. Only Ford. Uh, yeah. <laughs> only Fords. Let's do it. I'm down. I'll do it. Oh jeez. Lock Watcher, yeah. did you keep any props or mementos yeah. from the show? And what would you have liked to have had? Man, I didn't get anything. I've said this a million times. Yeah. I didn't even get my chair back. Uh, if I could have anything, I'd have my chair back. I, I want my chair back. I want my name, and I want Atlantis, and I want my chair back. Uh, the whole other thing. than that. I didn't know. Other than that, yeah, I kept a few things. I, I actually just got a, a big box of stuff from Vancouver. And uh, now my apartment looks like a hoarder's apartment from all the stuff that I forgot that I had a whole uh, apartment in Vancouver that I kept. And then they shipped it. I was like, oh, um, got to go through this stuff now. Yeah, now I got to go through it. So I was going through some of the boxes and I found, first of all, I found all my scripts, which was awesome to have all my and my scripts with my notes yeah. and my name and all, like my personal scripts. So I have those, a big pile of them. And then, so I'll probably give those away or charity or get them signed and charity them or do something. Are you coming to I don't need, I might. I might okay. fly myself there. I don't think they have, they, listen, all these cons now, yeah. they get the same three people and, uh, and then they tell me that there's no room for me. And then the fans and people are like, oh, I want you to come. And I'm like, yeah. cool. But like, I can only like, like, yeah, I could come and then, uh, but like, I'd like for someone to 
at least fly me there would be well, nice. You, so you need I'm to break even, you know, at the very least. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, you're a yeah. working actor, so. Yeah. Absolutely. So I, but I may, I may come just because it's in Van and I'm due for a trip to Van. So I may figure out a way to uh, to rip over and, and make it a twofer. Well, Let if it check. happens, I'll buy you dinner. <laughs> you so, don't have to do that. I'll well, buy you dinner. No, no, no. no I owe you. I'll buy you so. dinner. Nah, this, nah, these, nah. um, these. Fans. But on that, what else? Hold on. I found a bunch of. I also kept a bunch of art. I found a bunch of the stuff oh, from the art department okay. that I had. So some of the uh, James just original Robbins mockups art. and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So I have that. So that's other stuff that I'm going to get rid of. And other than that, I also have a bunch of the Polaroids, uh, continuity Polaroids from SG One that someone left with me, and then. I just took them home. And so I have a bag and now they're over. I have a bag of Polaroids from SG1 uh, and I really don't need those. And I'm sure there's people out there that want those. So at some point, I'll I may probably- pay you a pretty penny to get my hands on some of those. My friend. You want so some of those? We'll, we'll, we'll have to, I have we'll some have to of talk them about and I got, I got Shanks to sign some of them and- uh, Well, and anything, anything like that, I would probably submit to charity. Uh-oh. If it's, I'm here. Hold on, my headphones are- how do I do this when I... Can you hear me? Oh, uh, there. Okay, now I can. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, anything that has, like, their signatures on it, you know, would I think that that should be, like, a charity item. But any any of, like, the general Polaroids, I'm I'm very interested in would, oh, would oh, pay cool, you for. Yeah. So. Oh, no, no, no. I'll um, give them to you. I'll give you some. Yeah, this I'll is... Give you some. I, got, well, I got a bag. I probably have, like, you know, I think they're season three or four. They're early, I think. Oh, okay. Early. Because Shanks wow. has the long, funny, sweeping hair. That oh, okay, then that was the first two years. Yeah, I yeah. Think this, yeah the, he looks ridiculous. So. Jeremy Heiner uh, also says, uh, Happy Pride from a gay fan. What was the coolest thing about Toronto hey. Pride this year? What's going on? Uh, the coolest thing about Toronto Pride this year? Um, it's the same every year. It's, okay. It's, it's, it's love. I, I think it's more, what's funny is it's just becoming more and more corporate. Like, I've never seen so much... Oh, but also post COVID, it's beautiful to come out and just. Yeah, you're very right. Yeah, my lady's telling me. <laughs> my my PR over here is telling me <laughs> it's like, yeah, but tell them post COVID. You're absolutely right, baby. Uh, yeah, post COVID, it's um, we just haven't been able to gather in so long. So right. to gather in May and just, it's just so uplifting. I gotta say, in Toronto, it's just this beautiful energy. Normally, you know me, I'm such an introvert. I don't really leave the house. Um, even, even, uh, my lady was saying, uh, she was like, wow, you're actually pretty calm to be surrounded by this many people. And I was like, you know what? I don't, for some reason right now, I don't have anxiety. And normally I'm like, I, I need to go back inside and, uh, <laughs> I'm a bit of but, uh, but I feel great. And so I think it's, it's really to do with that energy of love. I don't feel like there's any variables I got to worry about. There's no one, you know? It's just beautiful. It's I think beautiful. also a lot of us have had plenty of time to ourselves lately, and it's time yeah. to, for a little <laughs> bit the other way. Eventually, it's going to yeah. be like, you know what? I've had enough. I'm good. I'm going to go back into myself now. But for yeah. now, it's like, hey, everyone, yeah. it's nice to be back. Nice to be out. Yeah. It's also the summer. It's so beautiful. That's I can't. So, so what's the best thing to answer this question? Um, people, energy, yeah. love, yeah. Um, acceptance. Um, Oh yeah, and just and just yeah. There's concerts. Everyone's just really happy. And uh, tomorrow the parade is going to be awesome mm -hmm. because it is massive. They shut down Young Street. Uh, if you know, Young Street is the longest street in the world, and they shut that big wow. ass street. That's the longest street in the world. Too. I know they don't shut it all the way down across Canada. <laughs> it's, it's, not that long. it's not that long a parade, but um, but but they do shut down the entire downtown wow. and. Uh, and they run all the way down. It's it's massive and it's amazing. Um, yeah, it's amazing. And then the parties and the music mm -hmm. and everyone naked and it's wonderful. It's just weird and awesome. It's great. It's Ellen Eve wanted to know, uh, Rainbow, what was your favorite episode of Atlantis to shoot? Uh, Runner would have been my favorite to shoot. Oh, the fight. Runner would have been my favorite. Um, yeah, I was, you know, I... I I did my little Jackie Chan up two trees for the start of that. They just swung the jib and I sort of created that shot that opened the show. Wow. Um, and I was really proud of that being a young man to like, be like, I can, like they were blocking and I was like, you know what? I can do this. Can we do this and bring the jib in and do it? And he was like, yeah, cool. Let's do that. 
And so I just sat up there and uh, like 20 feet up in the tree, I shimmied up there and that was great. Uh, practicing fights with Jason Momoa in the style of Jason Bourne and, and me and Jason, it ended up raining that night and we beat the crap out of each other. Mm -hmm. We both knocked each other senseless a few times and uh, it was great. We didn't really use the, the doubles. We really did most of it ourselves. And, wow. uh, and what was uh, it like working with Bam Bam to bring that to life? Well, Bam and I worked all, all through first season and, and yeah. we did a, like, I was one of the guys that was the uh, agile enough to, uh, cause I came from breakdancing. As soon as he saw me breakdance, he was like, oh, we're going to use you to do all the shit. Uh, so yeah, he had me doing flying arm bars and we, me and Bam had like a language already. And then Jason came in and he was nimble and young and strong. And so we were like, let's go off. Let's like, so mm -hmm. the producers had, uh, Born Supremacy had just come out yeah. and a uh, big fight in that where he goes to one of the other assassins house and uh, and they get into a weird fist fight that turns into a knife fight and it's really messy and it's all handheld and they had seen that and they were like we need to fight like this and that's where that but that's what they told Bam Bam and so he created that fight based on you know the the emotional and the in the gross sort of visceral feeling of, of, of that fight uh, mm. from the Bourne movie. And, uh, and so, yeah, it turned into, you know, a gun fight into a, into a knife fight and, or into a fist fight into a knife fight where I come out and then, you know, uh, eventually get shot a few times in that episode also. Yeah. Was, you know, the real uh, uh, showing Ford's strength, even though he was low on enzyme. It was, uh, <laughs> he like, still is going to go the extra mile. Guys, a machine. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes I think like maybe you couldn't have Ford back because if he was totally hopped up on enzyme, there's no one who could do anything. He could take on anybody. He's a monster. He's so. always how I think of, you know, like Thor and the Avengers. You know, you have a god on the yeah. team here. I've yeah. always had a hard time believing that as, as a viewer. Yeah, yeah. So. He's a god. It's true. <laughs> Speaking <laughs> of, uh, run, run. Uh, what now? Runner. That's yes, the, runner, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, Spe speaking of, of superheroes, Misadventure of a Little Wolf wants to know, Rainbow, if you could play a superhero, who would you play? Oh, man. As a what fan a, of the genre. What a great question. As the mega fan, as a comic book mega fan. So here's a, here's a, here's a weird thing, okay? Uh, I was up, back when we were shooting Stargate, I was up to play Green Lantern in the original Justice League movie that they were casting for. Uh, we were going to shoot in South Africa and then they, and then they were going to go with Ludacris. And I, and I was about to lose the job to Ludacris, which was the weirdest thing. Cause can you imagine Ludacris playing Green Lantern? I, I can't. No. Yeah. I was like, Oh God, Hollywood. <laughs> um, but I'm not a DC guy. I'm a Marvel guy. Yeah. Um, if uh, I, I, I grew up being a, a Deadpool fan before Deadpool was cool. So I would have said Deadpool before Ryan Reynolds because he was my favorite character. Ryan Reynolds is the perfect Deadpool. He's perfect. He is that person, you is, know, he so, is, in so many he respects. Is, he's perfect. So I'm totally fine with, uh, with <laughs> relinquishing that dream. To him. Um, let's see. Um, I, man, superhero or just comic? Because like, I would love to be a part of Elf Quest. That okay, would be that's fair. Um, like to play Cutter would be really cool. Um, but if I was gonna be a superhero, I don't know, man. See, I said I'm a DC, I'm a Marvel guy, but then like I'm thinking about Lobo a lot lately, and I know I'm there's no way I'm big enough to play Lobo, but I would love to. There are weights. There are gems. I, I would have to. Yeah. Uh, and there's the some rock, CG. The rock, the rock could play Lobo. Not oh, that's me. fair. Um, so I'd have to play someone that I could actually play. I don't know. Maybe I'd, maybe I'd, you know what? I'd love to be someone in, uh, in Alpha Flight. I would love for them to do an Alpha Flight. Like may, maybe play uh, Vindicator would be cool. I don't know. Um, yeah. Do you think you could do T'Challa justice? Do you think you could pull off Black Panther? Of course I could. Yeah. Christopher Judge yeah. is doing the voice work for um, for the video games. Oh wow! I love that he's. I mean, he's he perfect. is so cool. You know, God, when I when I turned on God of War, when I turned on God of War, I was just like, oh yeah, there. Exactly. 
He's Christopher perfect. Judge has entered the room. He's perfect for it. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. I uh, I would have also said, um, I, you know, I before Moon Knight came out, I was yeah. like excited for Moon Knight. I also would have loved uh, for them to not do Cloak and Dagger as uh, like a tween thing like they did because I would love to play Cloak. I think that's a. I know he's silent mostly, but uh, that's a great character. Yeah. But now there's a very limited um, there's a very limited catalog for for uh, melanated superheroes uh because it was a white world uh at the time of their creation so you know we got luke cage and we got a few others uh but there aren't the list is very short uh so i would have to go with one of the other heroes i don't know i'd love to play someone from alpha flight just okay. because they're, that would be cool uh uh omega red would be cool because i could be someone from from uh Weapon X, uh, I wouldn't, yeah, Omega Red would be really cool. Yeah, I don't know. There's so many. Fuck, I get, I, anyone. I, I would love to just be a part of the Marvel Universe, to be honest. I will play anything. But I, I would, at one point in my life, uh, I'm going to start, like I said, I've started getting in shape. I think I'm going to try to get in superhero shape and okay. see if I can uh, find a way in there. It's my well, dream. Well, they're not slowing down at any point. So, I mean, if with, with that being the case, I think it's almost just a matter of time. <laughs> so. Literally my dream. Like, I, I, if I can be a superhero, I'll, I'll, I'll be good. Like, I'll, I'll be done with acting. I'm fine. I wouldn't be surprised, man. Yep. Gap Stargate. Rainbow, who are your inspirations and your heroes in real life? Um, my inspiration, my heroes in real life, um, Sam Rockwell as an actor. Wow. Okay. That's my guy. Um, wow. uh, yeah, he's my favorite. He just, he hits all the notes. Uh, he does. This here, she's, uh, an inspiration. Um, my, uh, my dad, my mom, my sister, oh. and, uh, yeah. And, and everyone that I everyone I meet is an inspiration. I think, you know, there's so, I talk to everyone online every day and someone says something really nice or they tell me that I've helped them in some way. And I learn from them so much more than, than they think. Um, everyone's an inspiration, man. It's, it's a beautiful world out here. How is, how is Cree? She's fucking, well, she has COVID right now. Oh, uh, she's getting over it though. So she's, uh, she's in the weeds right now. Okay. So everyone, yeah, well, but she's good. She's in the tail end. Um, she's incredible. I wish I could tell you what she's been doing. I'm not allowed. Uh, but all yeah. I can say. Keep an eye on her. Holy shit. <laughs> holy shit. What she's about to unleash on the world is, right? Is, she knows, is crazy. Okay. Um, so that, and then she's also, um, she's the only... I think she's the only black female uh, voice director for animation right now in the world. There might be one more, but I think she's the only one. So she started to um, not only be one of the one yeah. of the biggest voice actors in the world for cartoons and animation, but she's um, yeah, she's on production side, directing. Wow. Now. Um, she's amazing. She's got uh, two shows coming out that she's directed. And, uh, but let me just tell you, her acting is bad. She's decided to come back on camera in the past few years. She had one of the best episodes in all of the seasons of what we do in the shadows. If you like that show, yeah, please, please watch her episode on that. She plays a character named Jan, I think, Yan or Jan, who is a vampire who uh, is a cult leader. And you find out that she's behind historically every cult that we know. And she always finds a way to kill all of them and bail. So they all drink the Kool Aid, and she goes out and the back takes door. Takes off. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Melissa Smith uh, really enjoyed your character in The Listener. Did you oh. enjoy your time on that project? The Listener was an amazing four years. I had I made great friends on that show as well, um, and it was what I felt was uh, a really great learning experience in a playground. Being the exposition guy, I had to learn how to. Um, how to explain the story and be the output guy for the for pushing the story along, which is what I found out to be a completely different skill set in acting than normal dramatic acting and anything that I had done previous. So I 
I watched a lot of David Hewlett tape, to be honest. And I, I uh, learned how to speak quickly because I was the tech guy and I was the smart guy. And, uh, and so, yeah, it was funny that I went back and, and actually watched uh, Atlantis and I watched Hewlett. I studied a bit of Hewlett stuff for that character. Wow. And I, him and I used uh, the, the kid, Gru Matthew Gruber, that plays, uh, or Gru Gruber, that plays uh, Reed on uh, Criminal Minds. Okay. So I did, it's sort of a, a mesh of Hewlett and, and, uh, and uh, uh, Matthew Gruber, uh, I think is his name. I think, I think those are the two things if you watch my character and, and me, obviously. I can't not be, my weird way of talking is not going to stop them. Well, when you're, when they're waiting for you to pivot the show, the episode into another direction with the exposition, that's tricky, you know, and you don't want to screw it up literally a different skill set uh it's a it's a way of or if you're explaining the way a, a certain type of missile works for three and a half pages yeah and it's talking you have to still be entrancing the, the audience you have to keep them interested and, it, and it's a different motivation and it's a different uh skill set and tool set that you use in your voice and cadence and your motivation mm. in order to do that it's it's uh it was interesting but now i've got that in my in my little tool bag so general maximus uh, have you seen the boys oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. We, I, we what shot, a show how intense we shot, we shot umbrella academy across the street like across the studio so okay. we're on one side, and then the boys were starting on the other and then i was shooting a show called jet at the same time in a studio down the hall so i was always with them and then one of my good friends works on on the boys on the amazon side of it in la uh, so I go out to dinners with uh, the cast and uh, yeah, and I'm a huge fan of the show. I haven't started this season yet, so don't, I've been working. I haven't either. I'm or behind too. So. Oh, the orgy episode aired. And so, <laughs> oh, geez. you know, that's right up my alley. So <laughs> Jensen Ackles. I, I mean. Oh, it's weird that Jensen's on the show now. Yeah. I like, I, I'm sure he's going to, he's going to fit great. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. His, his, his pretty boy thing. <laughs> Man, it is it is so good to see you, and um, and so good to see her, and uh, it's uh, I'm I'm glad that things that things are rolling for you, man. No one deserves it more. Thank you. I love you very much. I love you, me. brother. Um, but uh, you have a great Saturday afternoon. I will. And uh, I'm going to wrap up the show here, and I I hope that things pan out for us in in September. I I, I want to see you. You know what? September's. I, I'm working on, on two shows, uh, yeah. but if I can, I know it's on the weekend. Yeah. So if I can take the, you know, the Thursday off and if I can find the, and you know, have the Monday not have to work until at least the afternoon or something, yeah. let me, you know, I'll wait and I'll see what the scheduling is. And yeah. if so, maybe we'll, uh, maybe I can, I can talk this lady into joining me. And we'll hey, that'd be to terrific. Yeah, and we'll come. We'll come out to Van. I think that could be cool. Cool, brother. I'm due for I'm due for a Vancouver visit. All my friends out there are yelling at me. So <laughs> come home. <laughs> yeah, Jeez. yeah. So I'm right. totally down. And uh, everybody out there that's uh, that's watching this, I love you all. Thank you for all your energy, and um, I hope I see you soon. Absolutely, brother. Thanks for stopping by, man. Uh, be well. Okay, you too. Rainbow Sun Franks, everyone. Aiden Ford in Stargate Atlantis. Thank you so much for tuning in. It means the world uh, uh, for me to, to have you here. Uh, before we get going, Dial the Gate is brought to you every week for free, and we do appreciate you watching. And if you want to support the show further, buy yourself uh, some of our themed swag. T-shirts, tanks, tops, sweatshirts, hoodies for all ages as well as cups and other accessories in a variety of sizes and colors at dialthegate.com slash merch. And thank you so much for your support. And if you enjoy the show, uh, click that like button uh, so that uh, we can uh, spread the love and uh, it actually encourages the algorithm to share this video with uh, people who have not uh, yet seen Dial the Gate yet. So I appreciate it. Tremendous thanks to my producer, Linda Gate Gabber Fury, for continuing to help spread the word on these episodes, as well as Anthony. He's been doing that a lot lately as well. My moderating team is wonderful. Summer and Tracy, uh, they are my leads. They are terrific. Keith, Jeremy, Reese, and Anthony, you guys make the show uh, 
continue to make the show possible. And big thanks to Frederick Marcou at Concepts Web. Uh, he he uh, is our web developer and to Jeremy, our webmaster who keeps the site up to date. Big news coming next week. So let me pull up the schedule here real quick. I don't want to reveal too terribly much. I want to keep it a surprise until uh, certain things fall into place. So Robert C. Cooper is going to be a pre-recorded episode at 10 a.m. Pacific time on July the 2nd. July the 2nd, so one week left on, until our uh, hiatus through about September or October will be back. Then at noon, uh, the last live show, Stargate Trivia. Uh, will be at at noon Pacific time on on Saturday, July the second. Do me a favor, keep your Sunday, July third open if you can. We have another live show coming, and I'm not going to say anything more about it now. I will be announcing that uh, a week from today. I am very excited um, that the project is expanding um, with other people, and I will say no more. I appreciate you tuning in to Dial the Gate. My name is David Reed. We'll talk soon. See you on the other side.